Believe in yourself, it's a mantra. It's a slogan. It's my way of life. It's my greatest life lesson. And I owe it to Sakin Tendulkar Paji to me. As with pretty much every Indian of my generation, he has been a great inspiration, always. I was, however, fortunate enough to get to share a dressing room with him, bat in the middle with him, and also experience some of the greatest highs and lows of my cricketing career with him. It has always been a privilege and a blessing to have Sakin Paji as a part of my life. I'm truly honored to even be able to say that. I had looked up to him long before I met him in person for the first time. Paji and I would go on to have some and I would go on to have some memorable moments on and off the field for nearly a decade. But there was one meeting in particular that changed my entire approach to life. It happened in 2014, only a few months after Paji had brought an end to his legendary career. I was the one who had approached him. This was a few weeks before the England tour. I was going to Mumbai anyway. I had a few ad shoots lined up there, and I thought it was a great opportunity to pick Sakin Paji's brain. So I called him up and asked if he could come work with me on my batting. He not only agreed immediately but also made sure he was available at the cricket center at the Bandra Color Complex, BKC, every time I went there. Was staying at a hotel not too far. When I contacted the guys in charge at the BKC, it turned out that they had already heard from Paji. I was there for two weeks, and Sakin Paji came to every training session, spending three hours with me on each occasion. He was fully involved, and I was overawed by how much effort he was putting in to get me ready for England. It was high-intensity training. During one of the sessions, he pulled me aside and said these golden words that have changed my life, believe in yourself. You can do it. From that point on, he said those words to me every day, after nearly every drill we did. And maybe for the first time in my career and life, I began believing in myself instead of counting on external factors. The basis of Paji's comment was his belief that while batting styles and techniques can be perfected in the nets, what wins matches for your country is having the perfect mindset out there in the middle. As it turned out, I went to England and scored 180 balls, in the very first one-day international, ODI, at Cardiff, which won India the match. In fact, we ended up winning the series 3-1 after what had been a very tough test tour for the team, and I was man of the series. Paji was the first person to send me a congratulatory message on my phone. Not surprisingly, it read, Always believe in yourself. My friend was getting a tattoo around that time. He asked me if I wanted one too. I had never really been a tattoo guy before that. A tattoo is something you commit your life to and carry with yourself forever. Currently, I have a tattoo of my wife's and children's names. But it was back in 2014 when I got inked for the first time ever. It was a message that I knew would be the cornerstone of whatever decision I would take on or off the field. I got it done on my right arm. It simply says, believe. My chats with Sakin Paji during those two weeks in Mumbai weren't very technical to be honest. They were focused more on how I could change my mindset towards the game. He would always say that one has to constantly adapt to different conditions and circumstances as a batsman. Your technique will always be evolving, and that's how it should be. He did show me a couple of batting techniques as well, teaching me how to play the ball really late in England and how to play the ball close to the body to control the swing. He would bring along the specific kind of plastic ball. At times, he would give me throw downs too with it. He would often stay back after a session to converse with me and comment on that day's practice. The feedback was all positive, all about backing yourself and your way of playing cricket. That's what he did for 24 years, after all. Sakin Paji is quite literally a child of the game. He is also always childlike in his passion when talking about the game. He understands it so well, can comprehend every minute detail about what happens during a game and then can express his observations very well. We won the 2011 World Cup because of him. Not just because of the runs he scored. His contributions behind the scenes were even more valuable. He would keep advising all of us through every match as to what could be done, sensing the tone of the game. After we had won the quarter-finals, he told me that it was UV, Yuvraj Singh, and my batting that had done the trick, and that I would go a long way because of my understanding of the game. 
Words like these stay with you forever. And this wasn't the only instance of him being a great support. There were numerous matches where he would come and give me his words of wisdom and compliment my performance. That really meant a lot. My earliest memories of cricket obviously involved some of Paji's great knocks during the 1990s. There were so many of them. But some of his test centuries were unforgettable, especially in Australia. Many an off day at the hostel was spent watching him bat on TV. I'll never get over my first ever meeting with him. It was around 2001, when I was in Mumbai for the first time, having received a scholarship to play for Air India in the Times Cricket Shield tournament. We had our practice sessions at the MIG Cricket Club ground in Bandra. That's where Paji did his practice too. His old friend Atul Ranad was around at that point, and one day he informed me that Sakin Tendulkar would be coming around that evening. I literally begged him to introduce me to Paji. I can't express how excited I was, even though 20 years have passed. I stayed back for over two hours at the ground to make sure I didn't just meet Paji but also got to watch him practice. What struck me about him immediately was his humility. When Atul Bai introduced me to him, Paji could have easily just smiled politely, said hello and walked away. I was only a random kid with a cricket kit. But he actually hung around and had a proper conversation with me. He even let me hold one of his bats briefly. Such a megaster but so down to earth. There's so much to learn from Sikhan Tendulkar, and I got my first lesson the moment I was in his presence on that day at the MIG Cricket Club. I learned how you need to always maintain your fitness, in a holistic sense, while keeping in touch with reality, no matter how big and famous you get. Like me, he too was from a middle class background and had strong routes in the culture he came from. I could relate with him a lot, even if at that point I was just a junior cricketer and he the biggest star of the sport. That brief meeting was enough to tell me that while scoring hundreds and winning matches for your country might be the ultimate goal, it didn't mean much if you didn't possess humility. That's how you earned respect, by being humble in your success. I only got to meet him next after I had already made my international debut in 2005. He wasn't part of the Indian squad on that Sri Lanka tour, where I played three years. We first faced each other during the Challenger Trophy, in late 2005, in Mohali. I also remember being called up to the M. Chinaswami Stadium in Bangalore from our India under-19 camp in September of 2003. It was again a full-strength Challenger Trophy. Paji was part of one of the teams, and I got to watch him from up close without having had any access to him. I remember him getting VVS Laxman LBW and bowling Rahul Rivid out. Paji could do anything on the cricket field. The first time I took the field against Paji was in October 2005, when he was part of the India Seniors team, and I was with India A, under VVS Laxman. In that tournament, Paji got out to both Surrey Eason and Payush Chola, and their stocks rose incredibly as a result. It was a surreal moment, sharing the cricket field with him. Though he didn't make too many runs in the game, it still gave me ghost pumps to see him bat. Then, before long, one of my dreams came true when I finally got to share a dressing room with Sikhan Tendulkar. But let me first tell you about the time we were in the same fitness camp organized by the National Cricket Academy. It was in 2004, and there were some practice matches being held. In those games, we would bat together and put on some runs on the board. He never believed in any hierarchy within the team and would do his fielding drills with the likes of me, Irfan Parton, MS Dhoni and other younger players around. I remember how he always loved talking about the techniques of throwing the ball and would constantly give tips to us youngsters. We also ended up having numerous conversations about fitness, and he would explain how physical fitness in general is different from March fitness. I remember the first time I shared a dressing room with him. I was randomly stuck between Paji and Rayul Bai. It was way too intimidating. I got so nervous that after a while I just went and sat with Dhoni and Benu Gopal Rao in a corner. That was how much I was overawed by those two, and that was the kind of respect I had for them. There was also the incident when Yuvaraj Singh, UV Pa, put me on the spot. It was a sort of initiation that all young players had to go through back then. We had to give a speech introducing ourselves, mainly to the senior players. 
UV asked me who my favorite cricketer was, and without even blinking once I said, Ryan Rivid. Of course, UV wasn't letting me off the hook that easy. He had a very pointed follow-up question. Ryan Rivid. Not second Tendulkar? But Sakin sitting right here, and he's a great player too. Why wouldn't you say his name? He asked. All I could do was smile nervously. I had no response. I was so shy. Thankfully, Sakin Paji also joined in the fun and started laughing. In fact, he chimed in with, Yeah, Shoresh, why am I not your favorite player? It was all in good fun and was just a sign of how relaxed the dressing room was back then. It was such a welcoming place for a youngster like me. That kind of open atmosphere also meant that from early on, I started feeling like I belonged there. And Sakin Paji had a lot to do with it. Our bond strengthened very quickly. There was so much to learn from all those initial tours alongside him. There was one to Sri Lanka, then the famous one to Pakistan in 2006, and the DLF Cup in Malaysia that same year. One gets to learn a lot about life in general from Sikhan. There is no doubt that he was the best at what he did on the field, and there is no one like him. But Sikhan as a human being goes beyond that. His respect for others, his generosity, his capacity for enjoying the game, loving the game, and, most importantly, his humility these were some of the qualities I picked up extensively from Sikhan. There is no doubt that he was the best at what he did on the field, and there is no one like him. But Sakin as a human being goes beyond that. His respect for others, his generosity, his capacity for enjoying the game, loving the game, and, most importantly, his humility these were some of the qualities I picked up extensively from him. The moments we shared were really special, and they will always be very close to me. Batting with Sakin Paji was another major learning curve. There's so much you pick up, not just about the skills of facing world-class bowlers but also about taking decisions on and off the field. It's all about picking your moments and capitalizing on them. Our first real partnership in the middle happened during a practice match, where I scored 95 and Paji made 134. He was running and calling, guiding me through the game. The bowling attack we were facing was world-class, S. Reyes, Zahir Khan and Ajit Agarka. So it was quite a challenge, but one made much easier thanks to him. There's no junior-senior dynamic when you are playing on the field, even if it's a practice match. And it's the same for everyone. That's the first thing Paji told me. Watching Sakin bat from the non-strikers and was a privilege. Calling it the best seat in the house is an understatement. All the hard work you put in to reach the highest level was worth it just so you can watch him play his shots from up close. I have lost count of the number of times I've been amazed by the shots he played. Whether it was the back foot punch or the straight drive or the pull shot, and I can keep going, they were all an absolute treat to watch. Unfortunately, we didn't get to bat much with each other in dice. There were only five instances. His timing and his understanding of the situation the bowler, the pressure around, whether we have to attack at that point or just keep playing each ball was what made him the best batsman ever. His judgment under such circumstances was really good. He also knew exactly the right bowler to target at the right time. And his running between the wickets, of course, is rightly the stuff of legends. He would run your runs with the same intensity as he ran his. But he was never the sort who wouldn't listen to you. If I picked up something from observing a bowler or the opposition captain's tactics, he was more than eager to learn too. That's such a special trait to have. He always said that learning never stops on the cricket field. Off the field though, Sakin Paji was like a big brother to all the junior members of the team. He's always full of life and always excited about talking to you and learning about you. He would keep interacting with us after the match too asking us about our families, hometowns, educational backgrounds and stuff like that. Led by Paji, the other seniors, too, would always look out for us. It really felt like you were never away from your family. This was your family on the road. There are some unforgettable partnerships that we shared, mostly in Oda Cricket and, of course, the one during my test debut. There was the 13-7 run stand against Australia in Hyderabad, where he played out of his skin and made 17-5 of the best runs you'll ever see. 
It was heartbreaking that we couldn't get the team over the line, losing by three runs while chasing 351. I had rarely seen Baji look more disappointed than he did that night, despite having played one of the greatest toad innings. The team not winning hurt much more than his own individual achievements. That was a major takeaway for me. I was at the other end in Bangladesh, when he famously scored his 100th in international cricket in 2012. It had come after a lot of waiting and a lot of pressure that he'd had to endure from everyone. But I remember him telling me how relieved he felt at that moment and how he felt that he had aged faster during those months waiting to reach this extraordinary milestone. The best time I spent with Baji in the middle was during my maiden innings in test cricket, in 2010. Firstly, to walk out and have the great Sakunt and Dolka waiting to greet you in the center, it was a special feeling. There were plenty of nerves, but some of the anxiety settled down the moment I met him. He kept asking me to play patiently and bat for as long as I could. Sri Lanka had really good bowlers at that time. Mashya Muralit Arun had retired in the previous test, but they still had Zoraj Randif and Ajanta Mendes, who were bowling well in tandem. Ihara Fernando and Dharmika Prasad, too, were challenging fast bowlers in home conditions. The SSC pitch in Colombo was relatively flat, though. The hosts had made over 600 runs, and we were batting to save the test. Paji asked me to gauge each bowler and play accordingly. Running was the key, and the batting was to be done session-wise. Play as many balls as possible, and whenever there is a loose ball, hit it for a 6 or 4. The most important part was to remain positive. That was what he kept repeating. We ended up putting on 256 runs and eventually helped India go past 700 and dominate the match. Paji made another double century. When I was at around 90, he had told me not to worry about the century but to concentrate on the game just like I had been doing, the rest, he said, would automatically follow. And I remember telling him that it was my as well as my father's dream that I score a 100 with Sakin on my test debut. He just smiled and said, look, it's happening. When I scored the century, all he said was, enjoy the moment. You deserve it. I couldn't believe the dream had come true. Something funny happened the days after the test. Paji, as we all know, loves his food. He decided to take me and a few other team members to a Japanese restaurant. Here I was, a dull roti person who grew up only on the seafood, in a very alien setting. Paji ordered sushi, and I knew nothing about it at all. All I had heard of was wasabi, but I had no idea how it tasted. Paji and Yuvipa, who was also there, encouraged me to have the wasabi paste, which I did without fuss. For the next hour or so, I was dying. My eyes were all watery, and I must have drunk gallons of water. They kept laughing their hearts out. It was very funny for them, not for me. Paji knew how to celebrate and be happy for other people's success too. What struck most was how such a renowned personality was this down to earth and how nothing could come in the way of him serving the nation. When a big player like him wants to be a part of celebrating your success, it feels really good and motivates you a lot. It taught me to enjoy everyone's success within the team the same way as I enjoyed my own, if not a little more. It shaped me as a cricketer. Paji has always been very generous with his time and his space when it comes to me. In 2017, my wife Priyanka, daughter Grisa and I went to his house. It was when Zahir was getting married. His wedding was four days before my birthday. So, to celebrate my birthday, Paji called us the next day and cooked for us. We all had a great time. He was so good to Grisa and played with her a lot. We had met Paji's wife, Anjali, a couple of times as well, and she is as generous a host as Paji. I can also recall some memorable off-field anecdotes with Paji. This one really stands out. It happened in 2006. We were flying somewhere for a match, and I was sitting in business class with him. I was pretty young back then. One of the air hostesses walked up to him and asked for his autograph. She then turned to me and said, Hi, Arjun, how are you? How is your mom? Before I could say anything, Paji jumped in and said that we were both doing well and that Anjali was upset with me because I had not been studying and stuff. Of course, the stewardess had mistaken me for Arjun Tendulkar. 
It was hilarious, but Paji winked at me and asked me to play along. It was much later, when she saw someone clicking a photo with me, that she realized I wasn't Arjun but an Indian cricketer myself. She came up and apologized to me. I just smiled and said it was okay. She was so embarrassed, though. There are many things that I learned from Sikhan Paji. For starters, he was more disciplined than anyone I have seen. He gave the game his 100% at all times paying attention to his fitness, technique and to the game in general. It was always a treat and an honor to share the dressing room and the pitch with him. And his respect for the game is just commendable. He would always carry this picture of his kids, wife and say I Baba with him, which I had first seen in 2005. It was in his kit bag. Since then, I started carrying a picture of Say I Baba too. I had grown up watching Sakin play. The moment he got out, I would turn off the television, like millions of Indians everywhere. At our place, we would always discuss his game during every match. From there to playing with him was definitely a big transition for me, one that taught me how to respect not just the game but also people. The moments I spent with him were huge turning points in my life, shaping my mindset. He taught me how to be calm, positive, generous, tolerant and a better human being, 